All right, test one, two, three, test one, two, three. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. Hey, everybody, good afternoon. This is one of two streams I'm going to be doing here today. Sorry I wasn't able to make the first one because just life stuff and then Loki being a little brat, of course. Um, today we're going to be talking a lot about what the Fed said, uh, Drum Pal, everything in that realm of possibility because there's a lot going on. Um, I think the big thing of today is how dovish Drum Pal was. He didn't have to be this dovish when we saw, you know, when inflation's been this bad over the past few months and prices are going higher. He didn't have to be this dovish. So he was really, really dovish and I'm not entirely sure why, but for whatever the reason, the market as a whole decided to have a great day. The NASDAQ shut up, the SPY shut up. We're seeing a lot of good stuff here. Now, before we start going over the charts, hey, Edward, uh, excuse me, Edward, hope you're doing well. Crazy Waffles, Kevo, B-Way, Alt, Dave. And there we go. And hey, Haram and Lucy Stones. All right, so before I get started, Loki wants to say hi. He's like, you can see his ear right here. There you go. Yo, well, that was fast. All right, let's get started here today. <clears throat> Got myself a new fresh thing of water, and I'm thirsty today, so. You're going to see me doing that quite a bit. All right, so here's the five-minute chart. Um, you know, if I zoom out a little bit more, maybe the 15-minute chart's a little bit better. Last night, we ended the stream right around here, as I was telling you guys, looks like we found a little bit of support because we just kept on, you know, a lot of, we weren't flushing, let's just say that, we weren't flushing every time we made a new low. And then we managed to bounce off here a little bit throughout the morning here, going up higher and higher and higher. Again, day trades being okay. If you were shorting or longing during this time, it was just kind of a brutal thing to be a part of, unless you guys were really trying to scalp some of those breakouts, which was hard enough, I would believe, at this moment in time. <clears throat> However, we've now come to be on the path of stability just a little bit here, and this is this is great news. So this morning, when the you know the report came out, and uh, well, not report, excuse me, when the um, somebody called it a report a couple days ago. Now I keep on calling it a report. Um, when the announcement came out from the FOMC, uh, we definitely saw momentum continue going higher. And then once he started to talk, Jerome Powell was so much more dovish than I thought he was going to be because again, inflation's been going higher and higher and higher. He's like, meh, it'll come back down eventually. That's basically what he said. Like, eh, it, it'll come back down. So he is not in the mindset of like, oh, wow, something, uh, inflation is bad right now. He's, he's ignoring it, which is wild. Uh, and because of that, you saw Bitcoin up here towards 67000 almost $68,000. What are we at? We peaked around 67900 Dogecoin is soaring up. Dogecoin's up like, what, 16% in one day? So... If you guys were dollar cost averaging anything over the last few days, you're probably getting back up to neutral or maybe you're up depending on when you guys decided to, decided to buy. But people like me, you know, when I started to buy over here on this first dip, right, and over here, I'm basically a little bit higher now off of all the dollar cost averaging. We'll have to see what happens next, but I want you guys to pay attention to this if I go over here to the 15 minute chart, if I set this to auto very fast, and then what I want to do is go over here to the add to the 20. This is the 20 day moving average right there. And we just managed to break above it again. So you're going to see a lot of volatility going on today after this next daily candle starts. Even more volatility here. Uh, I'm just going to fly out. Like I said, I am absolutely shocked he was this dovish. I don't know if you guys watched it this morning. Uh, I was outside with Loki on my phone listening to part of it. And he sounded so much more dovish than I thought. Um, so I guess that's some really good news here. On top of that, we now have another breakout happening right here. Um, are you guys buying this breakout for day trades? Yes, for swing trades. Um, <clears throat> again, I, I'm a little bit more patient with this type of stuff, so I'm basically just waiting to see what happens next. But it's nice to see that these moves are happening right now. At least all the dollar cost averaging we've been doing has netted us some profit, depending on when you guys have been buying. Um, the daily candle looks very, very, very volatile. There's nothing we can do to get around that at this point. What it did do, though, is it did slow us down a little bit as far as the RSI, the Stochastic, and the MACD. The MACD is now coming back up with momentum. It's not bullish just yet, but we're seeing a little bit of a move. I think we might go back into choppy territory unless there's something else to galvanize us to go higher. So I'm still going to be um, trying to do more day trades than anything. But now we go look at the weekly chart. Weekly chart does not look nearly as bad as it did just a few minutes ago. Um, or if you me a few hours ago here. Here are these little lines. Can I get rid of those things? Uh, there you go. <clears throat> so, things have gotten a little bit better. Again, 
I'll, I'm going to still wait a little bit longer before I get excited and start going all into Bitcoin and stuff like that. But dollar cost averaging is still something that I'm excited about doing and it's something I'm still doing. As far as buying longs and stuff like that, no. Um, day trades, yeah. Day, swing trades, I'm still not doing them just yet. Although tomorrow, I think I am going to be doing another, uh, what, tomorrow's Thursday? Yeah, tomorrow I'm going to be doing another um, dollar cost averaging every week um, uh, with the 500 bucks in there. <clears throat> Excuse me. And hey, Heather, Wild Studios, hope you guys are doing well. Crypto Ricky, Los Canos. Um, and thanks, Crypto, I appreciate it. I'm just surprised we came up this today. Actually, let's break down it a little bit here. Um, I have to change something up here because I, I set it to auto last night where this thing that peaks so high. I need to go over here to my settings. I need to make this. Let's make it like around 10%. Gives a little more breathing room here. And you can see the buy order is still coming in at this point in time. Uh, let me get out of my apartment search. I found I finally found a nice apartment that's like only like 1200 bucks and it has a waterfront view and no balcony. And I think that's what I'm going to go for when I move to Panama. If I if it's still available. Um, okay, here we go. Fed meeting recap. Everything Powell said during Wednesday's market moving news conference. He was dovish as hell. I, I just don't see why. Remember a few. Remember, remember, uh, remember back in December, I was throwing a fit, basically saying Jerome Powell has given up on inflation. He would prefer that the economy stays strong, and he doesn't care necessarily about what's happening with inflation. If you guys, if you guys were here before the big market, the markets really started to pump. Excuse me for the starting. Um, you guys will know I was just throwing a fit about it. And I think he still has that mentality because again, for people like us, inflation really, it freaking matters. You know, gas prices are up to like 450 dollars by me. Um, things are like, phew, they're getting a little more expensive. Um, now, am I still paying for everything? Yeah, of course, but still it's expensive. I've been going out to the woods more often. So, you know, more, more, uh, more highway driving in nature. Um, but yeah, so let's, let's go over this. Um, the Fed chair is looking for confirmation of last year's low inflation readings. Uh, the Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell will continue to seek confirmation inflation. Confirmation inflation is uh, moving closer to the central bank's 2% target even after a recent spate, uh, spate of harder inflation readings. He, this is a quote. The other thing is, in the second half of the year, you had some pretty low readings, so it might be harder to make 12-month window forward, Powell said, so it just makes things more murky. The, um, no, uh, nonetheless, we're looking for data that confirms the low readings that we had last year, Powell continued, and give us a higher degree of confidence that we what we saw was really inflation moving sustainably down to 2%. Again, right now, inflation isn't going down. It's going up. It's going up. <clears throat> so, no bueno there. And again, the economy is still gearing up. Uh, and then something that came out this week, which is also pretty interesting, you know how there's a lot of jobs being created right now? It looks like American citizens, they're losing jobs right now, but because we had a massive influx of um, uh, immigrants over the last couple of years, they're filling in the jobs. So it's like lower quality jobs that nobody in America usually wants, you know? Um, you know, uh, could be uh, garbage man, whatever. You know, those jobs that people just typically don't want. Um, it seems like though uh, immigrants are getting those jobs and that's what's keeping the uh, uh, the numbers still high. So maybe when you guys see like, or you guys hear on TikTok, I applied for 50 jobs and I didn't get one call back. It's because those jobs aren't really hiring right now. It's the, the ones that are going to pay you like half of what you're asking for as far as salary. Um, so again, there's some weird stuff going on right now. Now, Hi, uh, this is two hours ago. Higher inflation data hasn't changed its overall trend downward, Powell says. Major inflationary data points the consumer price index and personal consumption expenditure rose for both January and February. Fed Chair Jerome Powell thinks the data is just further proof of inflation's non-linear path downwards. I think they have really changed the overall story, which is that inflation moving down gradually on a sometimes bumpy road towards 2%, he said during a press conference on Wednesday afternoon. We're not going to give them, uh, we're not going to overreact to these two months of data, nor are we going to ignore them. Oh, they're ignoring them. That, that's the thing. They're ignoring them right now, um, which is crazy. And again, if it, I could buy him not ignoring them if they acted hawkish, hawkish during this speech, right? No, nah, he was like, inflation, we don't have to worry about it. It's it's, it's just very weird. It's very, very weird. Um, this it, I'm happy. I'm a surprise. I'm just like. I would have never thought he would have just bent over backwards to be so dovish in a press conference. Um, I thought, like, like I said last night, I thought he was going to be neutral or hawkish in order because inflation has been going up. 
he basically has been saying, oh, it's it's just inf inflation just gone up two months. It's not too big of a deal. We'll worry about it later on if more data comes out. Like two months is a good amount of data. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's quite crazy. All right. <clears throat> and they said they need a good reason to cut rates. Investors are relieved to see three cuts stay in the dot plot. But um, no decision yet on balance sheet reduction. So they're not going to be easing anytime soon, which is good for the uh, good for the overall markets. So he basically just turned water um, or uh, he just poured gas on lean onto a fire of like, buy, buy, buy. Let's go all in on the market because he's not going to care about inflation. He's prioritizing the economy over inflation. There's a reason to do either one. There's a reason both sides have their ups and downs, right? Uh, it's good to have a job. It sucks if you can't buy bread, even if you have a job, that type of stuff, right? Or it sucks to be able to afford bread, but you're not going to have a job to pay for all the other stuff, basically. You, you get what I'm saying? Um, and what also happened because of this is, again, that. We tested the trend line and then boom. Um, 6.30 in the morning, the market opens up, starting to head back down. Jerome Powell comes out kills it right um i know we talked about a few of the different possibilities it's definitely it's definitely the downward one now so let me get out of these little bars because i think i did these on the um maybe on the daily chart or the weekly chart jerome powell said i don't care about inflation um so we'll see you know again if inflation continues to get worse he is going to have to change his stance but we saw what happened last time inflation went up. He kind of ignored it for a half a year. Then all of a sudden, oh, we got to change some stuff up. Um, I I am just surprised. Look at that move down. I mean, that dollar index just got shot. Um, so we'll see what happens next. That's for sure. But I, I was just astonished that we saw um, him go be, be as dovish as he was. I didn't think he had a reason to be. Um, even the people on uh, Fox Business and CNBC, they're like, he was very dovish for some reason. <laughs> That was weird. Uh, not the talking heads on CNBC and Fox Misses. They're usually okay with whatever the Fed does. The underlying, like the guests that they have every now and again, those people are questioning what the heck the, what we were looking at here. Uh, what right here? And hey, Carlos, Coinbase on some uh, on some manipulating the price and sell button last night. Well, only the down uh, crypto uh, popping off. She loves to pop off early in the morning hours. Let's see. And hey, Louis, uh, Mike, is company manager using AI for new jobs opportunities? You mean company managers? Um, they may use AI to scan your applications. Yeah, that's something that they've been probably doing for a few months now. Um, you know, but they've been using scanners and stuff. Typically, the best thing you can do is lie on your job applications. You know, tidbit it up a little bit, make yourself look a little bit better than you actually are. Get through the meeting because you're going to be fine. They're going to have to train you up anyway. Um, companies aren't really the most honest people out there, honest brokers, right? HRs. So I typically am for like, you know, smudging up some stuff to make yourself look better. If you got certain skills, you know, add them in there. And then if you get a call, you know, you can correct yourself in the in the meeting or something like that. Um, but yeah, it's, mm -mm. Um, they're, they're definitely using AI to kind of follow people along here and see who's the best candidate is, especially with probably Indeed. Indeed is probably doing that quite a bit right now. I still get, I still get emails from Indeed saying, hey, we have a marketing manager or a marketing director job that you may be interested in. I'm like, I haven't used you in years. Why are you, why are you still emailing me? It's time for the Ronald McDonald soak. And I have yet to hear that one right there. What's right here? Uh, he told a man to check himself. <laughs> the other night I asked you best case scenario for meeting and it played out pretty much like you said, and uh, the market shot up. Yeah. I just, I'm so surprised he was as dovish. Like, he had no reason to be this dovish. Um, I mean, you, you could have estimation, sure, but just, just to what do you call? Just to, he had no reason to be. Um, that's what was so weird about all of this. Um, you know, I'll cut up his video and I'll post a little bit of it tomorrow for you guys to watch if you guys want to. But I, I don't think many of you guys are going to care, honestly, but I'll, I'll still cut it up into short form content for you guys. He really had no reason to be as dovish as he was. It was crazy. And you see the result, right? The SPY also shot up. The NASDAQ also shot up. And the Dow Jones also shot up here. Everything was shooting up. Um, you know, oil came down. Not the worst thing in the world here. That's just it's more of a dollar thing. But yeah, Solana's up. ADA's up. Doge's up. I mean, Doge's up 16, 17%. Aren't you guys happy your dollar cost averaged? Bonk is up 14%. 
Milady token that we were talking about the other day, that's up 30% today. Mira is up 23. Floki's up 30. Whiff is up 13. Ocean's up 17. We just talked about buying AI tokens yesterday. Fa is up 30%. My God, right? Um, like, what is the Faradesk account to right now? Faradesk, futures. It was down 350. Now we're down 129. I'm still okay with that. And what's keeping us down? Big time is keeping us down right now. And Ethereum is keeping us down. That's really the big honkers here because we haven't added much else to anything else. So now instead of down 300 to like 50 bucks, now we're only down 129, 28. And that kind of makes sense because a lot of this stuff, if I go over here and I find some random token, like a ADA maybe, something like that. We're still not as high as we were just a few days ago, but it doesn't matter. At least we're finding a little bit of a floor here, a, a potential floor. If we don't fall down below what, $60,000, this will be great for us. This means we just stagnate, it goes sideways, and then we're ending up in a pattern like over here where all we do is go sideways before moving up. Or like this, maybe we have some ups and downs, but ultimately it's just sideways before coming up. So we might have found a short-term floor for just sideways consolidation. I'm still concerned about what happens on the weekly charts here. Let me go over here very fast. Um, right? The stochastic is bearish and the RSI is gonna be, uh, actually the RSI is okay so far. Um, Basically, the stochastics have back down a little bit more. Uh, I'm wondering if we're going to come down a little bit more and then just try to do a dip and rip without actually having the full capitulation down here to 50,000. Jerome Powell just saved our skins here, it looks like. Um, and again, after this daily candle is closed, we should see it probably cool back down a little bit uh, and then try to continue moving higher here. I don't know if we're going to be breaking above $74,000 anytime soon, but Jerome Powell kind of laid out the red carpet for us to do that over the next week. Uh, especially because we don't have inflation data coming out until what the 12th I think it was yeah it comes out April 10th so we still got a few weeks before that comes out here that'll be the, the next big like oh shit something bad's happening or oh some shit something's really good is happening that'll be it and right now we see Bitcoin after that breakout still moving higher here and it's still grinding we're up uh, 6,000 bucks right now yeah, 6,000 bucks. Now, not as much as we've lost over the past few days, obviously, but hey, a reversal off of a major news decision, it has effects. Remember we talked about the um, the larger move with BitMEX and how it has followed to effects that we have to kind of weather? Right now, this is gonna help us out a load at this point in time by starting to stabilize things up for people to buy. And all I wanna see is I just wanna see things consolidate, then break out, and then I'm all bullish on Bitcoin again. Am I bullish on Bitcoin right now? Not necessarily, but I'm still dollar cost averaging. Although maybe I should have dollar costed average more. <laughs> All right. I've been doing it pretty much every day, but um, you know, I was I was planning for Bitcoin to come back down because I thought the Fed might be a little bit more neutral. Nope. Uh way, 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 way more bullish. Way more bullish. Look at this. Dogecoin up 16%. This is a five minute chart here. Ran up this from this morning. It was at 1266. It's about 12 and a half cents. Ran all the way up here to 15 cents, basically, for 20%. And just a matter of a few hours. I am, but everything's going to have the similar story here. Uh, everything. So, you know, when you go to bed tonight and you say your prayers, uh, say a prayer to Jerome Powell. <laughs> uh, he definitely pumped up the market here. Um, I'm surprised he's given up on inflation like this, though. It's going to have consequences. But we'll just have to live with them at the time because at least Bitcoin's going up and that's that's kind of worth higher inflation, I guess you, you might say. Let's see. Hey, well, it's probably not to the moon from here on out. We're probably gonna have to cool off a little bit after this really big rise. But um, there's an incentive for Bitcoin to keep on burning through some short sellers here, and they're going to continue to have to be squeezed out of this right now. Um, you can only imagine with everything turning very, very bearish over the last few days and everybody and their mom telling you to sell probably online. Um, you know, you probably saw short sellers go really heavy in there. And, you know, right now they're just getting squeezed into oblivion. Uh, because they weren't expecting Jerome Powell to be as bullish as he was. And again, I wasn't expecting Jerome Powell to be as bullish as he was. Um, like, he was on a whole nother level of bullish. I can understand data dependent, yada, 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 nothing's changing. 
we're aware of the higher inflation, but we're going to deal with it. That type of stuff. Nah, he's basically saying it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We see it. We're not ignoring it, but we don't think it actually matters all too much in the scheme of things. And you, you can't do that. <laughs> you can't say that as the Fed chair. It, it, it causes too much chaos. Way, way too much chaos. Let's see. And hey, Ethereum Trash bought this morning dip before the meeting started. Couldn't be happy right now. What do you call it? I know when I was talking to you guys about day traders last night, I don't know if any of you guys took those day trades. Uh, you probably wouldn't have taken them until probably this morning, though, based off of when the change of characters were happening. Because um, the, the earliest one I would probably say is the 15 minute or the hourly chart, but the 15 minute is what hasn't been doing well. So you would have had to do a day trade only on the one hour chart, which might have been a little bit more um, iffy. So. Change of character right there at 12 o'clock. The 15 minute one. Yeah, that 15 minute one ended up in disaster. You buy right here, you have a stop loss here or here. And you can see how it just kicked you out before it ended up running up here. Um, so, well, yeah, that hourly chart was the only one I really saw as a clean one. I mean, if you bought the dip, you bought the support level, right? That's one way of buying it. Um, but again, even that's a, its own form of day trade. Remember, we bought the support over here, went up, and then went down for another level, then another level. You still have an opportunity to sell around there. Right now, you just timed it up pretty well with Jerome Powell's speech. But again, Jerome Powell, what was he doing? I really want to hear the thinking about this over the next few days because the market obviously loved the news. And hey, no, uh, wait, Novus, Novus one. I can't pronounce the name properly. Yeah, we we just showed the dollar index here, and yeah, he definitely caused the dollar index to crash. Uh, well, you can call this crash whatever you want to say. We were at resistance levels. We were about to break out. All of a sudden, we got we dripped back down a little bit more, and then boom, came back down. If he was hawkish whatsoever, we would have broken out. That would have been bad for Bitcoin. Um, but honestly, he just was like, inflation doesn't matter right now. That is wild. I mean, absolutely. Abs I, I can't overstate how wild it is that he was so dovish despite having multiple months of, of higher inflation and inflation going up faster, not just up, faster. Uh, so we're having an acceleration of momentum in inflation. Um, so hopefully, hopefully we have seen that inflation will come back down on the 10th of April. That'll be another big catalyst. If inflation's lower than expectations on the 10th, that should give Bitcoin a really good boost going into um, the halving here. Uh, how many days into the halving here? I think it was like 30. Yeah, 30, 30 days, 19 hours. So if we go from 30 days from now, draw this out here. Oh, right up here. Yeah, there you go. No, that's that's April 10th. That's inflation. So, so Friday the 19th. Why won't you let me do it? There you go. So, inflation having. We still have plenty of time to consolidate or go higher and all that good stuff here. If we do go, go into a full bull market bull move right here, it would stop us from having a death cross before we've reached our, like, you know, after all time highs, which to me is like a traumatic thing because typically it ends up being a very, very bad event for the crypto market. So that could also be something to be looking forward to here as well. But I think we gave ourselves plenty of time to try to rally on here before both of those dates occur. So that shouldn't be the worst thing out there. All right. Let's go over here and we'll just hold it as here so we can kind of watch it play out, it looks like. Um, larger market cap coins will cool off over the next few days and money will move into small market cap tokens. Now it's finally the time to buy small market cap altmin coins. Heck, um, I mean, I guess we've been dollar cost average in the last few days here, even though they've been going down and down. And uh, tell me, like, I, I know guys, as I was telling you guys I was dollar cost averaging, I know for you guys that were dollar cost averaging with me, I know it was painful to watch a lot of the altcoins uh, crash and burn as, I, as we were dollar cost averaging. But at least a move like this is pretty nice. Um, so the hedge is working out a little bit in our favor. And it's you. I, I was ready to uh, leave the whole market. It's a bull market. We're going to have moves like this. But the safest thing that I've found to do for me is just to dollar cost average when these types of moves. Like, 
The only thing I've been telling you guys that I would be doing right now is dollar cost averaging or buying for the long term or day trading, but I haven't been swing trading because day trades, they last for a few hours. They're, they're a little bit easier to trade. Um, you know, instead of doing a swing trade here, if you try to buy any point here for a swing, because I kept on hearing people say, Michael, can I buy? Can I buy? Can I buy? I was like, for a day trade, yeah, if we're talking about these dips, you know, because it goes up a little bit more, but then ultimately it comes down. If you swing trade, it just got brutal here for a while. Even for the shorts, though, they would try to short right here on the breakdown, which typically is what we taught, and boom, we just go back up. Oh, just weird, weird times. Oh, we're bouncing off the 200 on the one hour chart. That's what the little the resistance is currently. Uh, but what do we have this? Golden cross is on the 15. The one hour, we're about to have another golden cross. The two hour, we're going to have a golden cross probably tomorrow or later on eat tonight the four hour well we might not even have a death cross here anymore if bitcoin's able to hold on here and the daily might not have a death cross here if bitcoin's able to continue going up all right so it's at least some, some decent moves there one other thing here guys is now that this is working properly uh maybe it's just been my graphics driver since i reset my computer last night um grayscale as always, they sold off a bunch of Bitcoin here. Let me show you guys. There we go. There you go. Oh, my bad. There you go. Lots of Bitcoin being sold off, especially 16 minutes ago. They're doing something here. So lots of Bitcoin being sold off, sold off, sold off. That's fine. But Fidelity... Bought some Bitcoin this morning, 612 Bitcoin, BlackRock. Open C users. I'm not entirely sure what these ones are, but you can tell. Token Nian. Why are they buying this token? Okay, there's lots of tokens being bought by BlackRock today, and I'm not entirely sure why. Uh, anybody know any of these tokens? N Y A N. Why is BlackRock buying these tokens? N Y A N. Wait, what? They bought a meme token? Give me a second here. Let me move my face over here let's make this into full screen a little bit more if we can gone why is this showing up on blackrock's page to blackrock i wonder if people were just sending them over there to get it publicized over here perhaps right that could be something i doubt blackrock was just buying this stuff they got it from someone else yeah that's what it looks like right here yeah okay that definitely makes sense right there uh it's a good way to get publicity if you ask me one cake 420 gains modern marketing i guess is what you would say is let's go over here All right uh portfolio holding machine portfolio archive fund value ush they got some of that rio ethereum mog It's funny to see the tokens that have been donated to their wallets. What do they do with these tokens? They do, do they just hold it forever? I feel like they do have to hold this forever though, right? Because it's such a small amount of money to them. They probably do have to hold it. I'm surprised to see so many of those in one day though. Yeah, I that. yeah, that makes sense. I was like, that makes sense. There's no way they're, yeah, there's no way they're buying them. Is it bad if Ethereum is classified as security? Depends on who you ask. 
Most of the people around the world know it doesn't matter all too much. It's mostly that the SEC will have different powers to kind of regulate it, and it'll cause more roadblocks for them in the future. That's basically the big thing here. Um, it's all about the SEC and what they're trying to do. But again, the SEC has not had a good track record after going after cryptocurrencies and trying to convince the, the federal or the, the judicial branches of government, you know, the judges, that a lot of these cryptocurrencies are, in fact, uh, securities. So if we go over here and we just type in the SEC crypto. Oh, let me move my face back over here to middle display. All right. You're going to see SEC is probing crypto companies in Ethereum investigation as hopes for Ethereum, uh, ETF DIM. Ethereum Foundation gets SEC scrutiny in latest crypto crackdown. Ethereum Foundation faces inquiry from our government. Fortune says SEC. This is all of them kicking and screaming because of the Ethereum ETF in the pipeline right now. They're trying to slow it down as much as they can. I would still say we have a good chance of having it uh, be done sometime in 2024. Preferably, I would say sometime towards the end of summer early summer i know people have been saying that that seems a little bit too early to me but around august september seems still seems like a, a a decent place to be going there and all right here guys uh loki wants to say hello he wants a treat loki loki oh he's coming uh all the way around oh no what <gasps> all right here you go uh, yeah yeah huh? all right a uh, couple things of news here. Well, that's only one thing I news. I forgot. Um, so, this Friday, my sister's coming back from college. She's going to help me take down my desk. So, I don't know if I'm going to be streaming on Friday. I might stream on Saturday and just go out and enjoy myself on Friday night. And then, um, me and her are going to take apart this desk because I have to unscrew it to get through the door and stuff. Because it's like a, it's a larger desk, like wide, with wise. We're going to put it back into my uh, my movie room section so I have more ambiance when I'm streaming and I'm looking at you guys so you guys can see the nice blue lights, the nice TV, the nice sofa and everything like that. It looks more like a proper studio and that's the way I have it set up in there for for a reason. Um, so I'm going to be probably not streaming on Friday night just so you guys know. Uh, and I'm also probably going to take my sister out to dinner uh, to celebrate her coming back from college for spring break. Then she'll go on and do whatever she wants to do for spring break. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but yeah. So you're going to see a lot of stuff here with Ethereum though. So just get ready for it. It's going to be brutal. Uh, but Ethereum should uh, emerge on top in the long run here. I'm sure they'll never touch those coins. Uh, Vitalik uh, has the same thing. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Up 50k on Solana. Been holding for over a year. 300 Solana incoming. I still personally think Ethereum should never uh, get an ETF and doesn't deserve one, but I'm biased. <laughs> what do you call? It'll it, it'll most likely happen just because the the wealthier businesses out there they want it to happen, right? They want to make money off it. That's pretty much what's going to happen here. Um, I think after Ethereum, it pretty much goes to Solana, doesn't it? And after that, there's other options. But uh, what I'm hoping happens here is I'm hoping that people from around the world learn from how the Bitcoin ETF is structured and how it works. And then I want them to do similar things across the world with other tokens. So we don't have to have a Solana token emerge as the first one. And like, you don't have to have it start off in America. It can start off in Europe. It can start off in Latin America, Asia, wherever. I just want them to start sprouting up because again, they all have to buy the same underlying asset. Now, they're probably not going to be buying stuff that can be uh, that has infinite supplies for the most part, maybe unless it's some type of controlled type of thing. Um, so they're probably not going to do one on Dogecoin because Dogecoin is just, you know, incredibly inflationary. Um, but you guys get the point. They're going to be looking for different tokens out there across the world. And hopefully that uh, builds some exposure because, again, they could have an ETF down the road that's 25 percent Bitcoin, 25 percent Ethereum. And they just might buy some shitty meme coins to add 10 percent of them just in case they go parabolic. The entire portfolio still goes up as a whole. There is so much that they can do. So much that they can do. And that's why I'm excited about where the ETFs go down the road. Because it doesn't have to be America. It doesn't have to be. We have some crazy regulations. Check, trust me. I know. I know. I know. But the rest of the world isn't as crazy as us. <laughs> they, they have different sets of rules. And hey, Ken. Happy to see my man. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, what program or website do I use? I like it. Um, right, this one right here is Trading View. This is a free. The, I I, pay, I use the paid version, but they have a free version and a couple of paid opportunities here. Uh, I get the most expensive one on the 
the non-professional user one um because they they charge a shit ton for their professional ones what do they have um if i go over here to explore plans they have essential for 14 or 15 dollars a month plus for 30 bucks a month and premium for 60. i got this one but i buy it for 70 percent off the yearly price uh, so uh, I don't know how much to pay instead of paying like $600 a year. I basically pay like $300 a year 200 and something dollars a year You get it for 70 for 70% off during Black Friday So if you can wait until Black Friday to buy that week the yearly one go monthly until then. Oh boy, it's beautiful um, They have this new professional one though for $199 a month uh, For if you pay by the year, you know 349 if you pay by the year 499 if you pay by the year or if you want to pay monthly, it's quite a bit I just don't see the purpose of this to be honest. I mean It's more like I use this For te technical analysis sure But I could always use TD Ameritrade or Fidelity or Schwab if I'm using them any anything else and A lot of the stuff that this works well with isn't necessarily crypto I would say it's more for the overall stock market. So for crypto traders I don't think anybody needs this. This seems like the biggest waste of money. I've ever seen um like there's no reason you need to have 16 chart tabs charts per tab you know how tiny that would be on your screen yeah, you know i have multiple monitors and that's that's all you need multiple monitors it does does the trick just fine hey kevin yeah right now i'm still not bullish i am still neutral i would say i move from bearish to neutral right now off of this uh, and mostly the reason is I am very surprised that Jerome Powell was as dovish as he was during the speech today. I thought we were going to have, again, no change. We're going to go, no, not when rates weren't going to be writ, cut. They're not going to be uh, ris, rose, risen. Yeah. You get, you get what I'm saying. We we're going to have both of that stuff happening. And then afterwards, he would go out there and say, we are data dependent. Uh, we know inflation's there, we're monitoring it, and we're going to be looking for something uh, to change down the road. Now, he was like, we don't really care about inflation right now. The economy is still growing so strong. We don't have to worry about it. We're not concerned about the two months of higher inflation and uh, faster growth of inflation. He's just like, we don't care about it right now. And we're just, we're st we still think we're going to be going down. Blew my mind. And he also said rate cuts are probably going to happen fairly soon. Like very, very soon. He, like, he had to come back like very, very soon. Um, so even that was kind of like, oh, whoa, I don't think he did he mean to say that? I don't know. But he kept on like making these like verbal mistakes that he never makes where he normally is very monotone and grounded. He was not grounded through today's uh, presentation, if you ask me, especially when he was asked questions um, from the media. I, I don't because they were asking him like, hey, inflation's going up right now and you guys aren't doing anything. Why? And, you know, he had decent answers, I think, but in those answers themselves, in the responses, he was very, very dovish with them, which is, just, again, not something you expect to see there. Um, so much so that, again, you saw the dollar index have a massive crash <laughs> right here. You see Bitcoin going up. Yeah, uh, dollar index came down and it's still breaking down right now, right? Or is the market closed? Oh, market closer now. Is it closed? Yeah, it's closed. Let's see. There you go. So tomorrow it's probably gonna open up way, way lower. We were at resistance too. That at resistance got hammered back down. What a day. There you go. So again. In order for me to get bullish on cryptocurrencies and stuff like that as a whole, I still have to wait for, for me, this is my strategy, it doesn't have to be yours. I'm still waiting for all of these also just to turn back to being bullish, and then I'll be much more excited. I could still see us going a little bit higher tomorrow, coming back down, and then trying to have a breakout, right? Right into uh, the beginning of April. That could definitely happen here. Um, but I'm basically, again, just patiently watching. I'm dollar cost averaging. That's the best I can do. So I, I've made money today as the market moved back up. Um, mostly because all the holdings I had over the past few weeks, uh, <laughs> they've been coming down a lot, as you guys might imagine. So holding all that type of crap was, uh, looks like it was worth it at this point. Um, but to take a gamble on Joe and Pal, Jesus.
Hey, Hank. There may be certain tokens that haven't popped as much as others. You can try to go in there. Typically, the best thing you can do, though, is to dollar cost average. I mean, that that's what we've been doing over the past few, what, since what? Friday is what it was. Friday. Um, those dollar cost averages help out a lot. It's just a hedge that you have some type of position in the market in case we have a big bounce like this. Because you you can never guess on a bounce like this. It comes out of nowhere, which is why it's so exciting. Because, um, again, Jerome Powell wasn't supposed to be this hawkish. Um, I mean, here, let me see if I can find a CNBC video for us to play. I don't know if they're going to describe him. I was watching Fox Business and Bloomberg. Uh, um, but I, I guess I watched part of it on the CNBC. So look, uh, CNBC. Let's see. Here's one. We can listen to this video right here. So let me turn the music down here or off. Let me upgrade the desktop audio up a little bit more. Let me improve my audio. Let me finally get my headphones because I never use my headphones anymore because they hurt my head. There we go. Uh, actually, my voice is way too loud in here. Let me turn this down as well. There we go. Mic monitor. There we go. Okay. Everything still seems fine. Lower that up right here. The S&P 500 lifting go. to a new intraday record high above 5200, the prior intraday high around 5189. Of course, any rise today is a new closing high. You see the Nasdaq up 1%, Russell 2000 small caps outperforming up 1.6%. Now, Treasury yields relaxing a bit lower, but mostly on the short end uh, as we sort of get a little more confidence that the Fed anticipates three quarter point rate cuts perhaps by the end of this year. The 10 year uh, moving less. So you see a little bit of re of the curve, maybe that suggests uh, that the uh, more tolerance for some warmer inflation. But I would say, in general, right? See how he tried to like sidestep that, but that's important. More tolerance for inflation. That means it's acceptable for inflation to continue going up. We have tolerance for it. I don't want to have tolerance for high inflation. But if inflation, if a weaker dollar means that Bitcoin goes up, that's also something that kind of helps us in the long run here. Again, plus rate hikes and stuff, or rate cuts. Excuse me, not hikes. Uh, Chair Powell talks about the balance of risks uh, between employment and inflation roughly equal, but he's not particularly concerned about any of them. So let's get to uh, Josh Brown. He is uh, CEO of Ritholtz Wealth Management, Liz Young, uh, SoFi, uh, head of investment strategy. Just to break this down a little bit, Josh, um, markets seem to take the absence of any hawkish surprise as, as a positive. It's like we were in a strong market before. Um, the chair is unconcerned seemingly about the little bit of an uptick in inflation. There you go. I wish they would just be more honest. Like he, he, he was flat. He's like, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. So again, let, let's keep, just keep listening to this. And so therefore kind of game on. Yeah. My big takeaway yeah. that it, it, it is really that they're going to slow the pace of balance sheet runoff, which I found, I guess, to be uh, something unique. Uh, I also think this they're talking quote, about it, but they haven't decided anything yet. But it's definitely an indication. I mean, slowing the pace of balance sheet runoff reminds me of uh, when Henry Blodgett was posting all this stuff from Hussman. So somebody said, "Well, you're going to sell your stocks then if you're so bearish." He said, "I'm going to stop reinvesting my right, dividends." Right, right. Okay. <laughs> all right, we got it. All right. So that's that's one thing. Here was the other one. This is a quote: "The risk is two-sided. If we ease too much, we could see higher inflation. If we ease too little, we could risk damage in the economy." OK, thanks for those people who have not been paying attention yeah. to what the balancing act is. There it is. And quite frankly, nothing really seems to have changed to the point on either side of that balancing act to push the Fed. And really, I, I think we're enduring higher 10 year rates fairly well in the broader market, which is certainly not the purview of the Fed. What the 10 year does, you know, they're paying attention. Yeah. Consider this, Mike. Um, you've got seven basis points in the last week. You've got 41 basis points year to date. 
it's a fairly substantial move in the 10 year. Stocks are weathering that really well. Yeah. So today didn't really give you anything new on that front. And I think the balancing act has to continue. That is true. Although, again, you know, first of all, we always Liz, should uh, throw out the, the little bit of a disclaimer that a lot of times post-Fed moves are kind of like whipsaw one way, then the other way. Right now, it doesn't so. seem like there's a lot of room for interpretation here. But, you know, if you look at the, um, the summary of economic projections. Oh, that's one thing. What he's talking about is every now and again when we have an immediate move after the market or after the announcement happens, sometimes it goes down for about a half an hour, then it goes straight back up, or sometimes it goes up for a half an hour, then straight back down once he starts to talk. We didn't go back down after he started talking at all. Uh, we just kept on coming up. So you would expect further volatility tomorrow into the markets. But let's just watch the rest of this. It's like another minute or something like that. Actions which came out along with it. They keep the median of three anticipated quarter point cuts by the end of this year. Some of the highs and lows changed in there. So there's a fewer deep doves and, and not as much, uh, you know, in the middle. But I, I guess I would say is it also comes with a higher than anticipated GDP for the year and a slightly higher core uh, PCE inflation. Now, Powell seemed to say, well, that's just kind of marking the market what we know for the first two months here. It's not projecting ahead. But I guess that's understandable the market would take that as uh, a net positive. I, I think it is understandable that the market takes it as a positive, and, and we should, frankly. If you're looking at just the math of it, which had concerned me earlier in the year, the math of them projecting 1.4% GDP growth, and we were still supposed to somehow generate double-digit earnings growth, it just didn't make sense. So I think their projection to bring GDP growth up is a positive. Obviously, inflation a little higher, not as much of a positive, but not quite as concerning if everybody still thinks the labor market is going to be strong. People can spend and absorb that inflation if they're employed and they're confident in their wages staying steady. The thing that I think is interesting... We can finish off that. I think she made a good point to finish it off. They're hoping that you're making so much money that you can absorb the inflation. But and not everybody is getting 3 or 4%. Again, remember, inflation is going higher or a 6% higher inflation for the rent. Um, people aren't making like that much money uh, to pay off all the extra costs. Imagine your rent goes up this year. Um, maybe, you know, you're looking for a new place and the average rent is maybe 5 to 6% higher. Did you get a 5 to 6% raise over the last 12 months? Chances are you probably didn't, right? So that's some of the stuff happening right now. I think they were good to talk about the balancing act and things like that, but I think you guys get the overall point here. And hey, Bideford, happy to see you back. I sent Bonk to Mexi from Uphold, but my assets are on Ethereum Scan Network. Has this ever happened to you? It is not. I have never had to use Mexi before. Um, I don't think Mexi is in America, so I don't have the ability to check it out. The best thing you could probably do, Mexi from Uphold. You might have to message both mech c and uphold to see what's going on but i think the best person to message would probably be uphold because i don't know much about it if i take gains in bitcoin profit but the good the, the 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 goods are doubled in price i buy those with gains doesn't hurt the rule of the gains inflation sucks oh yeah i get what you're saying i see what you're saying yeah well again when these people usually talk about inflation they're they're very wealthy people. They don't understand how inflation impacts everyday people. Not even Josh Brown, who has a pretty good uh, Twitter following, right, or X following. So they're willing to suffer higher inflation, which to me is wild. I thought the whole purpose of all this crap was to hit the target of a two percent inflation. It seems that that's not really the target right now. It's just to keep the economy uh, huffing and puffing on full steam here. So. That, I mean, that means more people have jobs, right? So that, that is a good thing at the same time. But uh, I, I don't, I just, it goes back to that theory that I have about um, how he wants to make sure the election is going to be more beneficial to uh, Joe Biden because he's terrified that Donald Trump would try to fire him. And I think Donald Trump would probably try to fire him um, or at least not renew his tenure there. Uh, if it came down to that, he might say somebody else should go along. We like you, Jerome Powell. You've done a wonderful job, but it's time you quietly left the stage. Something like that. Uh, so yeah, uh, just, I don't know why they necessarily gave up on tackling inflation. Um, cause the whole point here was it's okay if the economy goes down as long as we fix inflation. Now it's a complete 180. Well, now it's okay if inflation goes up because the economy is going to be still doing okay. Um, 
they made a change of pace over the past few months here, and it looks like it's going to have some consequences for everyday people, um, but at least your stocks are going to be going up. <laughs> That's something always good right there. And hey, the Dolphin Man, happy to see you back. Sort of think this will dump. It'll probably have a cool off period after after such a great day, sure. Um, but again, I'm not swing trading right now, so all I'm doing is doing. Uh, I'm patiently waiting for this to settle down and then make that larger move up. To me, it looks like the Fed has given up trying to combat inflation. Powell sounded defeated, hitting uh, hinting that the economy is so bad that it can't be fixed and rates will have to fall anyway. Hey, Destruction X. Um, plus, it won't be his problem much longer anyway. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. I don't know. It just... It, 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 really, it really was a surprise to see him just not care about inflation and really be focusing on the economy. That's not what he's been doing all the past two years. It was like, he's like, the economy will be okay if we can battle inflation down. The economy will survive. Now it's inflation is going up and we just have to accept that because we want to keep the economy good it makes um it, it's just very it, it's it's very uh different than what he was saying just a few months ago right and hey sparrow welcome to the ruby level let me know if you have any questions i'd be happy to uh, answer them for you all right so let's take a peek here guys let's go over to the maybe the one hour charts we got some dips in here and let's just go down the list and see what we can find so ethereum is doing a little bit better bouncing off some of these fibonacci levels here like they were last night Still making a move, a golden cross inbound here. Oil went down a little bit today, but ultimately just kind of going grinding up basically over the past few days. Solana's up nicely. It, Solana dodged a bullet here, actually. Look at the four hour chart with Solana. If this thing would have fallen down below this next support level, it would have been all the way down here towards 150. And now we're at 190. Talk about a reversal there. ADA's popping back up here a little bit more. Opportunities for breakouts here for a few different things. Now, they're probably not going to be the best swing trades, but a day trade that you hold for eight hours plus, they might actually work out. Amp is still doing okay after that larger move. It's up 5% so far. Bitcoin Cash is up 13. Bonk is up 13. Crow is up 14 right now. Actually, a pretty nice pop. Uh, did not listen to the Fibonacci levels at all, though, or with these extensions. Ah, it was extension, not uh, retracements. Spell tokens up 12%. Oh, what's up a lot more, looks like. Pepe is up 25%, still moving higher here. I know it's kind of hard to see all this stuff. Uh, Pendle's up 15. Must have been earlier today, yeah. Milady's up 25. Miro's up 20 after having a really bad few days. Floki's doing okay, it's up at 28%. Whiff is up uh, 12% and Ocean's up 16. We are seeing some pretty nice moves across the board here. And Fa, um, this is something that most of you guys don't know about, I guess, but this is my, what do they call it? The low market cap, high risk <laughs> um, uh, AI token. We'll see if it turns into something golden here down the road, but I don't, let me see. assets well it was worth 200 and something dollars yesterday now it's worth 300 dollars today i guess that is going up here i just wish i could see where i wish i could see the history of me buying this i really don't know why it doesn't show me the order history here Or do I have to come over here to, okay, let me see. Assets. Send. Uh, no. I have it available. I'll have to figure that out. But at least it's going up in value and I'm happy with that. Um, I'm confused about why it's not in that main wall that I bought it in before. Markets. If I go to markets, is that something different? No, trading bots, partnership, no. Welcome to words, dividend. Spot trading. Maybe if I actually go over here to PHA, it'll show it. 
order history, no data. Hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, shoot up right here. Okay, I finally see it over here. Assets. Okay. So it finally showed up once I went to it over here. That's a weird extra step. Trade history. Month. There we go. Okay, it's in there a little bit. Yeah, so I spent, what, uh, 80, 80. That's 160. I spent 169 bucks, and it's now it's 316 bucks. That's not bad. That's not bad for a return. Especially when Bitcoin's been going down an arm and a leg, right? All right. And you see Bitcoin cooling off a little bit right now here, guys. We'll put it right there for you guys to see. And here's zero dollar G Row. G Row? Yeah. Welcome to the Level, my man, and thank you for gifting one membership as well. Did I really appreciate it? Let me know if you have any questions, as always, guys, and I'm happy to help you guys out. What exchange do you use to spot with leverage? No, no, you don't you don't spot trade with leverage. You don't spot with trade with leverage. BYD Fi is probably my favorite as far as uh, having tons of things to use with trading, right? Um, this one, if I go over here, right? Uh, I'll do this right there. There we go. I'm trying to let, not let my head block it, but you see me scrolling and I'm just still scrolling. These are all things that you can swing trade or day trade with leverage. It can be 1x, it can be 2x, whatever you feel comfortable with using, of course. But uh, BYD Fi is probably my favorite as far as having so many options with different tokens because sometimes other exchanges don't have the ability for you to do a 2x long on a really like low market cap tokens that's maybe like 50 million dollars so if you want the opportunity like you know byd fi is one of theirs if you guys want to sign up for it though use my link down below so they keep sponsoring the channel uh big time got me scared but i know it pumps hard when it does oh hey Kedrona. i i know it's it's down for me quite a bit uh maybe i should add more to my position here i'm not entirely sure because byd fi what are we at uh let's see what byd uh, big time it's down a little bit more it's kind of back at a support level let me add a little bit more in here let me add another 50 dollars, and we'll see where it goes uh a little bit above that I'm going to order. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I moved my dollar cost averaging just a little bit more there. Not a lot, but a little bit more. Um, hopefully that works out here. Oh, actually, let me see something. Faradesk will delist Strax USD pair on 320. That's today. Do I have any Strax? Do not. Okay, good. Don't think I had a reason to buy that one. Well, can you check Pi? It's Pepe's or Texas Sun Good launch on Sol, another Solana one. Um, let's see. All I think of when I see PP is what do you call is not this guy. I think of the guy from South Park, uh, Mr. PP, who has the, the water park. So it's a low market cap token with like $5,000. This thing is tiny. There's no technical analysis you can do on this to make it like worthwhile. You're basically just buying and hoping that it goes higher. And then whenever you feel like you've made enough profit, you sell. Um, typically, the way I would say you try these coins is you want to buy some uh, high risk. So it's like a, it's like tossing money on black at a casino. Uh, even worse odds than that. It's like quadruple zeros or something on top of it. Um, you want to buy some. And then once it reaches a good amount of money, where you feel like you've made enough profit and you're really happy with the profit. You sell it. You sell about 80 percent of it and you walk away and you're fine. That last 20%, you hold on for a few more months while Bitcoin's still doing all of its crazy stuff. And if by some chance it goes parabolic and even goes much, much higher, then you still sell the rest of it around that time and you'd be just happy with what you get out of it. Because um, this thing looks kind of weird. The website is very, very basic. They need to update all this stuff. For heaven's sakes, they still have Twitter on their main page, which means this thing is just so new that they have a long way to go. And they're sharing stuff from China I don't know. This one seems like it's very, very scammy to me. Um, the community doesn't seem like it's very, very good at this point in time. So I would be on a whole like, eh, you know. You see these ones right here? You know, 2022? Eh, yeah. I, I'd be very cautious about trying to buy into that right now. This this thing seems like it's, um, what is it up? Down 99% last year. 27% last month. I don't know if this one's going to be a good one. This is probably, like I said, just tossing money into casino and maybe hoping something works out. 
But you got to be careful because those fees are going to be very, very expensive for you. And here is zero uh, dollar zero. Excuse me, my mouse is uh, doing it. Thanks again for joining the membership. And yeah, so if you're new to trading, typically where I would tell you to go right now is while you want to learn, you have a couple options. Um, there's Faradesk, there's BYD, Fi. Those are both sponsors of the channel. So it's up to you if you want to actually go down with those ones. Um, then there's other ones like Kraken, uh, Coinbase, and those might be some opportunities for you. Um, and Coinbase has something called advanced trading that you might like, although their advanced trading has been having issues over the past few weeks, so probably I shouldn't recommend that one. Um, but BYD Fi and Faradesk are both good ones. I would probably steer you towards BYD Fi just because they have more things to trade. But since you're new to investing, typically if you're going to put money in there to practice with, just put $100 in there and then see how fast it takes you to lose that $100 because it's going to happen pretty fast as, as you're new. Um, and then instead, while you're having fun with that, you know, I'd probably say if you just want to do something simple, put a 2x long on Bitcoin or whatever token you want to and just leave it alone. A 2x $20 trade with $100 in there, but $20 trade, just leave it alone. Don't do anything. Just let it let it, let it move around. Don't touch it for a while. Um, and at least that way you have some type of position in the market, basically. And then what you could do is instead you could go over to this is either for Faradesk or BYD Fi. They have these things right here at the top uh, called derivatives. If you go over here and you go down to demo trading, this means you're trading with fake money. That way you can try to learn all the technical analysis behind trading, when to buy, when to sell. And during those times, you could practice with uh, fake money. So when you're actually good enough to use real money and actually make money, then you could start investing more capital behind it. Um, usually it's very, very hard to start just like start trading because what typically will happen is somebody will, uh, they'll just start learning to trade. They'll toss in a bunch of money into cryptocurrency. They'll buy Bitcoin. Bitcoin will fall five or 10%. They sell and then all of a sudden they'll dead. They're down 10% in their portfolio and then Bitcoin start to skyrocket again. And all of a sudden like, oh shit, I missed the opportunity. I got to buy Bitcoin again. And then Bitcoin comes back down again and they sell again. And they panic instead of just buying and holding and waiting for the market to move higher and higher and higher. Um, and so you got to be careful as a new investor, not to get caught up in all that uh, stuff. Because uh, if you watch me or any other YouTuber, uh, I think I'm a little bit more grounded, I would say. But there are tons of other influences out there that that make it their job to just excitement or fear. There's like there's no middle <laughs> no middle ground there. Um, but in the meantime, you know, watching some videos on YouTube, it doesn't have to be my content, anybody's content about um, day trading strategies, uh, what are moving averages, you know, um, the basics of trading, uh, the basics of charts. You can look at read books from like, you know, um, technical analysis for dummies, uh, day trading for dummies, swing trading for dummies, that type of stuff. Uh, and kind of read those books and get used to it. They don't cost too much money as far as I remember. I think maybe like 30 bucks or something. Uh, but that'd be a great way to get started into the market here. Let's see. I'm already invested in Bitcoin, but I want to get more involved with the trading aspect. Yeah. Um, basically, I would learn the basics of like candle bars and what each one thing like, you know. Like this is a wick. This is a body of a candle. When it's green, it means the bottom open. It opened right here, and it closed right there. If it's red, it means it opened up right here, closed. You want to learn all that baby stuff, basically. And then, um, if you're looking for strategies, I have plenty on my channel that work out pretty well. Um, I would say the best one is probably the the the, the oscillator strategy. We have oscillators mixed in with uh, change of characters and uh, smart money strategies. That's the best one there. Um, and again, I always put out videos about those ones every now and again. I just put out a video about it maybe a few days ago. So it's usually pretty good, pretty, pretty good idea to know when to buy and to sell. The only thing is the problem with it, which I don't think it's a problem because I like to have my free time, is it doesn't give you a new trade every single day or every single hour or something like that. You could go like maybe three, three weeks to a month with no trades set up for you properly and then after that period of time, you could have a trade every single day if you wanted to, depending on how each breakout works out. But you have to be patient to wait for everything to align. Like you have to wait for the stars to align in my strategy for everything, because that way it just makes it very easy to make money. Uh, the time it doesn't always happen, but you have like maybe a month or two months when it does happen, where everything is golden and green and you're looking at a lot of money. Then you have times like this where I basically been telling you guys for the past like week and a half, I'm not trading. I'm basically just waiting. <laughs> yeah, there's different things about it. Um, but usually, you know, that gives me more time to work on YouTube or I just go out and enjoy my life, right?
Hey, Ty, do I have to have KYC with BY, BYD Fi? I don't think you have to have KYC when it comes to BYD Fi now. And hey, Crypto Rookie, uh, what do you call uh, the music? Oh, yeah, let me, uh, the music. Uh, hold on a second here. I, I have to turn on the volume here, so it's going to be loud for a second, so bear with me. There we go. There we go. That should work out a little bit better for you guys. Sorry about the start off with the loud music, though. I think me and Crypto Lifer have the same type of music. Yeah, no worries, zero dollar. Um, the the newest one I put out was just uh, I think a few days ago. No, YouTube, stop. YouTube has been so laggy lately for me. I don't know what it is. Should I just open up a new tab? No, it's Google as a whole. How is my computer handling all this stuff? All right, so my channel here. This one right here, golden strategy. I still need to make another thumbnail. Actually, I did make another thumbnail, but I hate the way I look in this photo. So I'm going to find another one, put another photo of me on there. But it's like 39 minutes long, post like five days ago. It's a long, like how you set up everything and exactly how you trade it. And I go through some back testing to show you guys how to do it. Somebody asked about back testing, not like after I, I went, like I just spent another 10 minutes inside the video, back testing it to showing you guys all the times it worked and all the times it didn't work. So you had a pretty good idea of how often it worked. Uh, which ignores me because that means they just asked a question without watching the video. Um, but yeah, that's that's a video you probably want to watch right there. There you go. And I, I'm gonna, I usually like to post videos every day explaining what's going on in the market. Today I didn't because I was so tired from last night. But uh, I'm going to get back on it here pretty soon. And hey, Brett, where I'm not trading. I'm just waiting. Oh, well, you nail it. It's typically the way I got to go. It just makes trading so much easier. Like people usually are looking for reasons to trade. I'm just, you know, I'm just waiting for it to happen. Like I know what works for me. I know what works for me. Some people are more than happy to buy these types of breakouts right here and watch it play out, you know, and, and so forth. But the reason that I have my personal trading style is because I like to make $5,000, lose $500, make $5,000, lose $5,000. Like I know I'm going to lose some inevitably, but the money I make is it's, it just grows so much faster than losing it because again, I may not be making as many trades, but if the stars are aligning, as I put it, which, you know, it's not really like stars are really aligning. It's just literally that like, Hey, um, here's the daily chart. Everything turned by, by, by right here. And you notice it isn't even at the low points over here, even though it was dollar cost averaging. That's why dollar cost average usually. But, you know, it was off of this breakout here. Right. Breakout right there. Also a breakout that happened right here, though. But you see there's a, there's a, everything's green on the oscillators, plus the change of character here. Everything's green, green, green. On top of that, we have a change of character. Is my, oh, my smart money is not turned on here. Uh, this is not yet. Change of character, looking good to go on the daily chart. So I can just buy right here after the breakout. And when I buy, everything just keeps on going up and up and up. That's how I like to trade. I like to buy and just watch it go up. I don't like to buy and watch it go sideways or down, then up. I like to buy and watch it go up. It's for my anxiety. I have anxiety and ADHD. It's my strategy built around keeping me calm and collected while, tra while trading, okay? It, it, it works out very, very well uh, for me, right? And then once you see that both the daily and the four hour charts are all aligned like this, again, I mean the daily charts and the weekly charts all on, then you can go over and do the four hour charts, the, the hourly charts, the daily charts, and each one that goes along again, let's wait for the next change of character here, right? The next breakout, I guess you would say, this is a what, four hour chart, yeah. Uh, when's the next breakout? Hasn't been many breakouts. Yeah, because this was all bearish here. So you see how this is changing character right here, but this wasn't aligned, so you don't take that trade. And what do you know? Nothing really happened. Um, yeah, nothing really happened here. I mean, maybe you want to take that profit, but it's not worth it for me. Uh, I have to again, I have to buy and not go sideways, but go up. Um, hmm. Oh, here's one. Buy. Buy, buy, change of character right here. 
took a few hours, but there you had that large move that made it, that justified it. Although I would say that would probably was still kind of a smaller move here. Oh, but this is during the ETF times. Remember, everybody was freaking out about the ETF one day or another. Bad news, good news. Let's see. Here's one time where it didn't work. Change the character right here. All right. So right there is an opportunity where it maybe went up a little bit, but ultimately didn't move the way you want it to. And so if I go back over here to maybe change this to like a yellow one. Back over here to the daily. Oh, look at that. On the daily, it was red. You don't buy it. You get what I'm saying? It, 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 look, it, it forces you to go down a checklist and be smart about all your trades. Uh, what I need to work on is articulating exactly how I do this. And I'm trying with every video, but ADHD and making videos, it doesn't go well together, honestly. Um, like, I just kind of sputter sometimes and I wish I didn't. But again, like, th there's, there's a checklist and the checklist saves you so much money from being lost. Um, because, you know, if I'm making 20 bucks and I lose a dollar or if I lose five dollars, that's still great for the portfolio because the portfolio is still growing. All I want you guys to do is grow your portfolio. I don't necessarily care about you guys becoming like multimillionaires and stuff. You guys can do that in a very safe way, in my opinion, but it's definitely going to take time for me. Uh, you know, again, I can make a few thousand dollars in a few weeks. I can make a like 20, 30 thousand dollars in a few weeks, depending on how the market's moving here. Um, but then when the market's not doing anything, again, I still have the money left over. I can take out, pay my bills, stuff like that. But um, I wish, you know, I, I need to practice on, uh, I'm going to work with an editor to make a better video for you guys. that completely lets you guys know with animations to, to make it easier, right? And hey, Bideford, thank you for gifting five minute memberships very, very much. Looks like the memberships went to uh, Cyber, XMMGX, Pravi, Steven, for, uh, Steven XXSY, Lease, xx and there we go i appreciate it a lot bide for let me know if you have any questions as always but you know you, you always ask you've been a member for a while thank you Let's see and hey richard the big thing about trading futures it, it's basically just the leverage um for instance if you trade something really really large like um like you trade bitcoin with a 125x leverage that means that if Bitcoin falls down just 1%, and if I go over here, right, from over here, let's say you bought right here because you thought we were moving higher, and then we fell down 1% right here, that means that your position is now down 125% basically. And if you have an isolated trade, that means it's not uh, uh, it's not using the overall portfolio as margin, that means your whole position just went 100% just uh, liquidated, which means you just lost all the money of that trade just like that in about um, 35 minutes, all the money is gone. So if you did a $10,000 trade with 125X leverage, it's gone within a few minutes. Now, at the same time, if it went up a little bit more, it can definitely make you, again, 125% profit. You make a bunch of money there, but the volatility can kill you, which is why you typically want to be doing lower leverages. If you want to do high leverage and you guys want to have an opening, you guys will typically have to set it onto cross right here. So there's cross and isolated. I'll just read this to you guys very fast. Cross is, this is what I use. All available balance of the account will be used to meet maintenance margin requirements and prevent liquidation. All corresponding available balance can be lost in the event of liquidation. So if one if one uh, trade goes liquidated, everything is liquidated at the same time, all of your trades. Um, but if, you, if you're doing proper risk management, it doesn't matter. Isolated margin means the margin assigned to a position is restricted to a certain amount. If the margin falls between the maintenance uh, below the maintenance margin level, the position is liquidated, which means only that one position will be lost, but the position can't go down nearly as much with a higher leverage. Um, so if it goes down you know, a few percent, you could you could lose everything in that one position. So it's like covering for your other positions, basically. There we go over here. Even right now, Bitcoin is not on the five minute. It's not even good for a buy, but it's gearing up for another move. It looks like the 15 minutes. Ooh, just turning bearish. I actually, I actually see them down. One hour is still fine. Two hours still fine. Four hours fine. Daily still not good right here. Uh, but there we go. Yeah, we even have we haven't even had a change of character here on the four hour chart yet. Uh, we're getting there though. Again, give it a couple days, and I'll be much more excited about the price action. Um. There we go. There we go. 
And thank you, goodbye for that. I appreciate it. And also just being from mod too. <laughs> oh, see me being a mod too. Is Fairness KYC? I believe it is. Yes. Um, I think, yeah, I, th I think it is. I mean, you could double check with it and just like sign up and see if it actually asked you for it, but I think it was. I think it was. BY DeFi is not. And Hentai, is that Fairdesk I'm using? The one I was just using right here, yeah, this is Fairdesk. This one is BY DeFi. They're, they're pretty similar. They just have a few different, different, uh, looks to them. I would say BY DeFi has trading bots, which other exchanges don't have. So, that's also something interesting. Um, you can go over here, use the bots if you want to. I don't like to do bots all too much, but people do it. Um, right. And they have their own way of going about uh, all that type of stuff. Right. So let me actually get rid of some of these other things here. There we go. And we can keep that. You can get that on there. there we go. Really looking how to navigate and use trading platforms, like how to start long and short. I have Bing X. I just don't know what all the buttons do. Uh, I don't have Bing X. Um, I don't. Okay. Every now and again, Bing X says I, it's not available in my location. So I'm not entirely sure if I have access to it or not. But I am going to be doing some more tutorials here on how to use different exchanges. But uh, one exchange is typically like another one. I'm in a restricted region. <laughs> um... There you go. Yeah, I'm in a restricted region, so I can't do it. Uh, it should be a lot easier when I move to Panama next year. That way I can use any exchange I want to because I don't think there's any exchange there that's really banned. Or, honestly, I can just use VPNs more freely when I move down there and I don't have to worry about the government breathing over my neck and stuff. Um, so, it, that'll be a year from now, so no, no real good help there. But I am going to be putting out tutorials on Fairdesk. Uh, What's the one over there? Uh, BY DeFi. And then I think I have two sponsors that want to join next month, but I'm still testing them out right now. The sponsors are Blowfin. It's Blowfin and the other one is... Um... What's the other one here? Bitmart. Yeah. So Blowfin and Bitmart there. Um, both have decent exchanges from what I've been seeing so far. Actually, they have a couple bells and whistles I actually really do enjoy. Um, and so I'll be doing ones on those as well here, just so everybody has an easier uh, time of navigating everything. Uh, but typically, when you have an exchange, you find yourself not really going off into whole different areas. Like when it comes to uh, BYD Fi, I typically just go into the futures trading section. I don't really mess around with other stuff. Maybe every now and again spot, but that's about it because they have a lot of spot options I like. Can you use your trading view chart on exchanges? No, you can't transfer the data, unfortunately, no. I mean, exchanges have uh, charts, you know, they have their own trading view charts, but you can't transfer your account in there, unfortunately. I've, I've tried many, many times, many, many times. Does the buy and sell indicator on your live stream work most uh, with most altcoins? Yeah, but it's not gonna be nearly as complicated as the one I have that I use and that's mostly because I can't fit it all onto the screens so it's much more difficult for you guys to get the full signal that one I would say is not as accurate but it still kind of shows you the overall move of which way everything's going and it's okay if you guys have to scalp if you guys have to swing trade it's probably not gonna be the best move since it's a 15 minute chart right um but yeah it still works out pretty well I'm not yeah yeah so yeah, I have a few links down below if you want to check them out. You don't have to sign up for anything and just check them out and see if you like the aesthetic. I think aesthetic is a huge thing of why I like certain exchanges over other ones. Um, what's right here? Somebody asked me a question. Hey, Mob, is BitBoy in jail? Uh, <laughs> No, no, no. He's not in jail. He's... I think he just restarted his, his, uh, I think he just restarted his stream, actually. Yeah. BitBoy Crypto is back. Welcome to the new show. BitBoy is back and better ever. Thank you to the main sponsor, Stake, right? So there. He's back. He has a new show and everything. He even has glasses. 
Oh god, he has glasses. Oh man, that's that's weird. I'm not used to glasses. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not used to him with glasses at all. Sunglasses, sure, but regular glasses really freaks me out a little more. Um, why Panama? Uh, first of all, I love Panama a lot. I enjoy the area. The rent is a lot cheaper than what's out here around uh, Seattle, Washington, uh, because this place is heavily techified. We have like a Microsoft headquarters. We got Boeing. We got uh, Amazon headquarters. We got T-Mobile headquarters. We just got a lot of headquarters here and everything's really expensive. Drinks are expensive. Everything's expensive. And the crime has been getting a little bit more worse out here in the Pacific Northwest, which is a little bit more of a eh, factor. Um, and Panama, I can actually start a business down there and hire people, which is going to be a lot easier for me. I can hire people down there for like maybe 10 to 15 bucks an hour and I'll feel okay paying for that much. If I pay somebody like... I can't even pay somebody 10 bucks in Washington state. It's below the minimum wage. It's illegal. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I want to be able to start a business and Washington state isn't really a good place to start a business unless you guys have like lots and lots of capital and the capital that I'd have, I don't want to pour it into YouTube necessarily. I want to be able to pour, I guess a little bit in there, honestly, but um, you know, I want to be able to start a business down there and I don't want to have to worry about all the other stuff. What are, what are you doing over here? What are you doing here? Loki says hello again. Uh, you don't get a full piece this time. You're getting too many treats. You get a tiny piece this time. Where's Loki at? Ah, psh. Mm -hmm. All right. There we go. Doggy breath. Hey, Vegas Nick. Um, enjoying the first pool day of the year. Ooh, that sounds really, really nice. Uh, we had, it was sunny yesterday. It was so bright that when I went out to the lounge, we had to go back inside because it was actually we were starting to sweat just from sitting outside. It was crazy, um, and now it's cloudy and gloomy again. <laughs> just what it is. Okay, now what? Did, I, I missed a couple of questions here. Let me see if I can go back to a few of them here. Um, let's see. And hey, JF, uh, retard? Yeah, I can look at retard for you. Oh, is it? Uh, so it, it's not on trading view. It's only against Solana here, so. So it's been created uh, uh, automatically using on-chain data and contains unverified information. Okay, please do your research. So here we go. Retardio, is it retardio or radium? Tardy, no. You said retardio, not retard. No, you said retard, not retardio, Jesus. Um, There it is, retard right here. There we go. Radium, still radium though. All right. Well, this is the one hour chart and there's not really much going on here. This seems to be a YOLO token where you're just gonna try to buy and hope for the best. At this point in time, it does look like it wants to move higher and doesn't look like it's gonna be dying anytime soon. Here's the 15 minute chart. You can see it's been consolidating for quite a bit of time here on a lot of time actually, but it's just trying to make a reversal here. If you're looking to buy, this is probably going to be a good opportunity. You're not going to even want to have a stop loss on this though, because you know, the volatility is going to be pretty high, but there's not really much I can tell you. Maybe besides the website here, search on X. Does it even have a website or a TikTok though? Retard Solana. No. So it's too new to have any information. It doesn't even have a website. And there's a big old red flag on it too. So yeah, not verified. So seems to be a big, uh, Big gamble 
but I mean, if you like to do the small market cap gambles, it's a name that could go, it can go uh, parabolic just off of the name itself, uh, especially if you're starting off at a very, very low market cap, which it looks like you are right now. How did you check ETF buys? Love the stream. Uh, you can go to Ar Ark or Arkham. Excuse me. I just call him Ark. Um, Arkham right here, top left hand corner. If we just type in Arkham dashboard, it'll pop up and you can kind of go through a bunch of dashboards here. It's pretty darn nice. I, I enjoy going through the lot and kind of checking out what's uh, what's available out there. Do I see myself ever leaving the crypto market? I don't think so. Uh, just because I have so many long-term assets in the market and I, I want to like pass down cryptocurrencies to my kids and whatnot whenever I have kids. Uh, no, probably not. Even when I move to Panama and I start doing other stuff besides YouTube, like um, I'm going to spend some time automating other YouTube channels. Like, you know, all the trash YouTube channels and TikTok accounts you see where there's just a bunch of simple stuff that's just eye, eye porn, basically, that makes you like, oh, I can't look away or like Karen videos that are cut up and stuff. I'm going to have a massive YouTube form of people just making all of that content for me uh, on different YouTube channels and stuff. It'll be great. Um, probably won't start that until the end of 2025 though. Uh, once I get settled down a little bit more, but, uh, you know, even with all that stuff, I'm hopefully, hopefully I can hire a manager to manage it for me. And then I'll be the guy that, um, just kind of sticks to the crypto lane. And then, uh, but I'll, that'll be my investment. That'll be how I make a bunch of money. I can hire a bunch of people in Panama to do all that stuff for me, which would be great. They get a good job out of high school or out of college. And then, um, I just have a lot of passive income for keeping people entertained online for uh, for hours and hours and hours every single day as far as like those other TikTok videos and stuff. Um, but for crypto, you know, I'll probably stream about three, about three hours a day on average doing a bear market or something. And then from there, just uh, tutorial videos. To, uh, yeah, tutorial videos galore. <laughs> tutorial videos galore. And thanks, Mohammed. I appreciate that. Right, let me move this down a little bit more. Oops, I missed something here. Can I sell a futures contract anytime I want to without being penalized or incurring extra fees? See if, if a crypto going bearish, I shouldn't worry about selling it. So for futures, if you use leverage with futures, you're going to be paying something called a funding fee. So you get a small fee every four or eight hours. That's like 0 .00 something percent. And you're paying that for the trade. So if you're holding for months and months and months, then yeah, it'll it'll have an effect. Um, but usually it's not going to have so big of an effect. Like remember we, we talked about this a little bit, I believe, with the fair desk trades we did. We bought during um, mid December and we sold March second. And if I go over here to the closed positions, let me see if I can find them for you. So you'll see right here. There's different fees here. There's a trading fee right here. Oh, that's a bonus fee, excuse me. This is the trading fee right here or the funding fee. So when I was able to, let's see, I made $216 off of this with a 2X leverage, but because I held for a few months, I $24 of that went to fees for the trade. So instead of walking with $216, I walked away with $192. That's basically what happened there. Um, and if I go to any position, like, um, Bitcoin, right? You'll see right here at the top, it says funding rate and countdown. It's 0.0236%. And the next one is going to be uh, in 35 minutes or so. And if I go down here, oh, uh, you can't see it. Um, funding rate 0.0236%, funding interval every eight hours. So I, I pay that every eight hours. Again, it doesn't really end up to be a lot because you $19 there for three months, $3.5 for a couple months, $6 for a couple months, depending on the size of the position. Um, like what? Uh, this one, you know, it made $1,700, paid $51 in fees, walked over at $1,600. The fees that were $51, the fees here were $31, the fees here were $1, $6, $10, $3, $2, $51, whatever. Um, so you do pay those fees with the 2X leverages and whatnot, yeah. 2x and above, I think. Typically, I don't care about it because the money is more than worth it. The women are beautiful in Panama too. 
Oh yeah, that's true. They have everyone else in the middle point. If they have some rules that definitely can build up some hype in the beginning, which can definitely get it going back up towards maybe a, a few million dollar market cap or a few thousand dollar, uh, uh, tens of millions of market cap potentially. Hey, go reminder. Shiba Kinu has come out next week. Whatever you heard, I haven't heard anything about it. I don't keep up with new tokens, people. They typically like once they become available for me to buy on an exchange. That's that's when I notice them. That's when I start to buy them and see if I get lucky and they they go parabolic down the road. But usually, I don't do too much research because the majority of the time, I just never get the opportunity to buy them because they kind of like they die off before they get to the exchanges. Because exchanges have to do all this, uh, they have to vet them and all that other type of stuff. How hard is it to make a token? Um, probably not too difficult from what I've heard from people on the stream before. It's not too difficult, but, um, you know, pumping it up is the hard part, I would say. Two. And hey, Andrew, love your channel so much more than Mitch Ray. Thanks for streaming. His TA is great and all, but your overall positivity is so refreshing compared to his negative energy. Oh, I don't know much about Mitch Ray, to be honest. But again, um... My whole goal is to just kind of be happy and chill and just relax throughout streaming. Uh, streaming can be very, very stressful. It doesn't have to be, which is again why I don't go looking for too many trades left and right. I basically just wait for my setup to work. It's magic and then I take the trade and I'm very happy with the result so far. That seems to be my thing this cycle is just kind of being more chill. Um, now day trading can be stressful and stuff. Don't get me wrong in certain circumstances, but typically as long as you have that stop loss on that, you're pretty happy. Um, sometimes you don't need even to have a tar target price target, but I would have one just in case for the new people out there, but, uh, stop losses, save yourself some, uh, some trouble and get yourself a stop loss. Oh, uh, what's it here? What are my thoughts on Tesla? It's been dropping for a long time while everything else went up. Yeah. Uh, EVs are not in a good spot right now. It looks like at all, uh, if you go over to, um, well, let's just go over to Tesla stock very fast. I know it's not cryptocurrency, but we can still talk about it. Uh, there you go. There you go. It's back down to the same levels it was back in May of 2023 or December of 2022 or all the way back over here in November of 2020. It's been doing a whole bunch of nothing. I don't really own much Tesla right now. Uh, part of it was because the breakdown that we saw over here. All right, and again, this is why. Oh, actually, was it uh, turn log off? I think that's what it was. Yeah, there we go. Um, you can see it's been coming down for a while. If I buy Tesla again, it's going to be because we broke out above this, or because something really bad happened here and we just started to dump. And I want to buy a, catch, a falling knife, perhaps like maybe if we come all the way back down here to one hundred and eight dollars or something. Uh, but yeah, right now they're definitely in a pickle. EVs are not doing so hot. Uh, and your specific question was, uh, well, everything's, uh, yeah, it seems like the EV market is cooling down a little bit. And that's pretty much what's been happening with Tesla and a lot of the other automakers. If you go over to, do I have any of them over here actually? Or are they usually all, uh, or do I have a lot more of the tech in this one? All right, let's just go to F. There you go. You see how Ford is back at the levels from 2018 and 2016, a whole bunch of started with action. You've seen automakers as a whole coming back down quite a bit. And that's mostly just because again, they, they've had to kind of scrap a lot of their EV plans. If let me go actually back to Bitcoin here for a second. Five minute chart here. There you go. I'm tapping on Loki's button. He's just wagging his tail. Light taps, light taps, yeah, light taps. I uh, have to, I have to groom them later on. All right, um, type in EV slowdown. Um, industry pain abound as electric car demand hits a slowdown. EVs won over early adopters, but mainstream buyers aren't interested. Possibly, that's what it probably says. Um, Audi says the course on EVs uh, stays the course on EVs despite market slowdown. 
the EV slowdown has already hit Tesla, Rivian, and others. These stocks are next, perhaps. I'm not entirely sure. The, the six months that short-circuited the electric vehicle revolution. No, EV sales aren't slowing down, but they will. This is in February. EV slowdown turns the table for leaders and laggards. Not even Tesla can dodge the EV sales slowdown. And it's a whole narrative right now building up, and that's pretty much why. People just, you know, when I go out and buy a car, I'm probably not going to be looking to buy a Tesla as my first car. Uh, probably because I'm not looking to buy a car right now because I remember I'm moving to Panama. But um, it, they're still expensive and people are, again, feeling inflation. They're feeling it. And as slowdowns continue to happen more and more, um, you know, it, it's going to be painful. Once the market recovers, Tesla is going to be the first thing that pops up and goes sky high. But until then, it's going to be a little bit uh, of, a, of, a, uh, of an issue. Like if you go with EV and you type in Ford, the news around EV Fords will be something. Um, let's see. Ford said he'd be planning $25,000 compact EV for 2026. Delays three row EV SUV. Um, put to this. So the EV has been put to the side while the company focuses on new platform for affordable EVs. So instead of doing higher end EVs, they're going to try to go as cheap as they can with 25,000, which isn't bad for a car. This little thing, you know? Oh, that's a that's a that's a explorer. That's a little bit going to be a little bit larger. That's not going to be the twenty five thousand dollar one. Um, yeah, we'll figure it out. I think if you go to a Ford right now and you try to buy one of the EV cars, how much are they costing right now? Vehicles, future vehicles, commercial, electric, and hybrid. Mach E. It's at forty thousand dollars. F one fifty. Let's see. So the cheapest one is forty thousand dollars. They got a Maverick truck over here. No, this is hybrid though. Hybrid, 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 plug-in hybrid. So Maki forty thousand dollars looks like what it's at right now. All right, it's that thing. I don't necessarily like the look of it, but you know what? It has a tablet. You know. It's like any other electric car on the market right now, probably. Not the, the largest mileage, 312 miles. I should get you somewhere, probably, sitting for five, four hundred twenty dollars a month, right? Some models lease at seven. Oh, I don't even know. Uh, but yeah, so there's some issues happening right now in the EV market. That's all you got to know. That's it here. Toyota Mobile is coming. Tesla will be below $100 to give some time. So Tesla and bought iBit. Uh, probably a better investment at this point. Toyota Hybrids were a correct choice, up 80%. We call Toyota always knows how to make a good car, though. Um, Toyota can make something cheap that people just like. Um, like, isn't the Toyota Camry one of the most uh, used cars in the USA or something like that? The Camry has just been tried and through. I think I've seen so many people like buy them over the years. Because people, they don't break down, as from what I understand about Toyota, they just don't break down as much as other cars out there. And when they break down, it's usually not a very expensive thing to fix. I've heard that Teslas can be very expensive to fix as well as other EV cars out there on the market. So that is going to be a little bit more of a drag on a uh, when somebody is thinking about buying a car, you know. I would be looking to buy a gas guzzler for a very long time. Like, like even when I moved to Panama... Um, I want to. I want. I would want to buy a gas guzzler forever. Gas guzzler. Gas guzzler. Gas guzzler. Blah, 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 blah. You know. You, you know what I'm saying. Uh, I would love to buy gas guzzlers. Uh, because I just I want to be able to go out in long distances, and if I have an SUV, I can carry an extra tank of gas in the car to refill on the road. You know, uh, Panama is a different experience for sure than like you know being in Seattle or something. But you guys get the point. Yet our economy is strong. No. I, I know you're being sarcastic, but yeah, the government's pretty much lying about the strength of the economy. Um, the news is now subtly hinting at it, though, as well, which is kind of nice. Not like a Fox News or something like that. Kind of like a more moderate uh, economic news sources. Um, like... Can I find um, news recent last month? 
There you go. Immigration is taking pressure off the job market in U.S. economy. Expert says this is from March 2nd. So this was a couple weeks ago, of course. Um, foreign born workers made up 18.6% of civil civilian labor force in 2023, up from 15% in 2006, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Um, while immigration poses some challenges, it's a net benefit to the U.S. economy, economists say. Without foreign-born labor, the U.S. labor pool would shrink because of the lower birth rates and the aging workforce, making it harder to finance programs such as Social Security, right? So, again, going up higher and higher and higher. Um, I don't know if this is actually covering the legal migrants or if this is illegal migrants. Let's see... Let's see, because I know we're still having lots of immigrants come over. Can I see a, is there a chart here perhaps? 175, there you go. So, you know, uh, for all the pe jobs that people don't want, they're usually just taking them up, right? Uh, as long as they pay taxes, I typically don't have an issue with it because the government doesn't seem to care about it. Um, but enforcement encounters is going up, up, up. So this is, where are we at right now? 2024, there we go. Oh Jesus, yeah, look at that. I mean, we're just starting off high. It's crashed back down. Oh yeah, it's crashed back down. Usually comes down, it looks like uh, in February, which is nice to see. And it should be going back up once summer arrives here. So we're definitely gonna have more influxes, but again, October, September. Yeah, we're just making records right now. Single adults. Let's see. Yeah, we're going to break some records this year, it looks like. I mean, but honestly, if I was an immigrant and I heard that Trump was more likely to win the election based off of the polls, I'd be trying to come right now instead of when Trump's in office because you know there's probably going to be a huge reversal in policies. Um, yeah, there's probably going to be a huge reversal in policies if Trump wins. I don't know if Trump's going to win. Because right now, isn't there, uh, there's like three big contenders. There's Donald Trump, Joe Biden, Kennedy, and then there might be the no labels people. But I don't think no labors, like, it's like, it, we're pretty close to election. They don't even have a person to uh, run yet. And I think everybody tries to be the third party candidate, but then you have to start deciding, like, how you guys are going to vote on stuff. And I think it could be almost much more difficult. Like, Let's say I'm running for no labels or something, and I say, oh, I'm for abortion or I'm against abortion. You just, like, ticked off half the country right there. Or I, I want to raise taxes or I want to lower taxes. Oh, you just ticked off another half of the country right there. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's it's a completely different type of mindset that you have to have uh, once you're actually in the race. Do I use the four-hour chart most of the time? Normally, I have a four, uh, I have a four chart spread. I think I showed it to you on that video I did a few days ago. Um, load layout. Normally it's like this. And then what I'll have is, oh, I keep on forgetting my head the way it's looking right now. Um, I'll have the weekly chart up here. This is a micro strategy. So let's go over here to Bitcoin. Everything's Bitcoin. I'll have a daily one right here. Uh, I will have the order blocks off on a lot of these things, though. Otherwise, the auto doesn't really make sense here. Um, but I'll do like that for now. There you go. Let's turn the order blocks off for this one as well. There you go. Then I'll have the four hour one right here. And then... Auto, auto, auto. And I'll probably have something like the hour or the 15 minute chart. All right. And you can see like, for example here, well, let me see if I can make this full screen. You can see over the last few hours in the four hour chart, we were kind of all red and we still are red right now. We haven't had that positive change of character just yet. But you can see if we did any longs during this period of time, that long didn't work, this long didn't work, this long didn't work, this long finally did after a breakout, 
but you see how just having this at four, it, it makes it so you would have lost, 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 and had one good trade during that period of time. That one good trade is probably not going to make up for those three losses that you suffered. That, you know, that's how I, this is how I usually have my chart set up, but I'll usually have it shrink down a little bit more, shrink down a little bit more, shrink down a little bit more. And then of course I try to manage it here, but normally all this is done on the setup. I think when I use this for a tutorial, I, I change the sizes of everything just to make it look a little bit easier on the, the videos. There you go. Where is that? There you go. That's fine there. 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 Something like that, just so I have a chart. And I'm, it's usually on the side window here so I can just see and then once I see a 15 minute chart and everything else is aligned, I'll try to buy that. So if you go back over here, you'll see that everything's been green on the weekly chart for a while. The daily chart's been, um, well, the daily chart's still been green, but the authors have been red here. Uh, let's see, when's the last, well, we've already been over what last time everything was green. Everything was green here, here, on that little hook up, it looks like there was some volatility. When was this? Everything went green over here on February the 27th. Oh, it's back over here. Oh yeah, here's the fire. Yeah, here's one started going green. So green, change of character, momentum is all there. So when I go back over here, again, February 27th. 24th, 27th, right here. When everything eventually starts going up, you buy these greens, you're good to go. You buy these greens, you're good to go. You buy this green, you're good to go. And of course, once it started to slow down again, like over here, March 24th. Is that March 1st? That's March 1st. March 1st over here. Oscillators are cooling down a little bit right there. Just stop buying until everything goes back into being into the green mode there. There you are. But that's typically what my charts look like. They look a little bit nicer than that, to be frank. I don't have the colors on here all that often. I added the colors to help new traders out in my last tutorial. Um, but you can zoom it out a little bit. I think people really care about the numbers on their screens, but I typically don't. And you just have everything set to auto and you just basically just waiting for everything to be green, all the oscillators to be green. And then from there, you, you kind of just go gung ho time to buy. There you go. But you know, uh, not everybody can afford to have all four charts on the two. I think that's the, I think different trading view program, uh, uh not programs, different, um, Whatever you call them, different plans have different amounts of charts you can have on your, uh, your, your, uh, God, I'm tired today. Layout. How many charts you can ever lay out once? And back over here. There we go. A good buddy has a Toyota hybrid Prius 2023 gets like 72 miles per gallon. It actually looks good. Also lots of cool gadgets to measure efficiency. Yeah. Right. Certain people like certain things. And as long as they're happy with them, who cares? Um, like I said, I drive a Ford fusion. I love it. It's nothing fancy at all. Um, the coolest feature I would say that my Ford fusion has, if anything, is the fact that when I put my car into reverse, the rear view mirror, like the camera, it goes to my rear view mirror, like up in front. So I just look ahead and it shows me little angles and stuff. And I'm like, that is exactly what I'm looking for right there. That's the coolest bell and whistle thing my car has besides like heated seats and stuff. But you know, that's, that's kind of typical these days. My two year old Tesla model Y has been super reliable and only needs some windshield wash fluid. That sounds great. See that, that that's, that's a good Tesla right there. Let's see. Oh yeah, I mean, there's going to be people coming across the border until uh, Trump or Kennedy, one of those two people wins. I don't even know if Kennedy has a chance right now, but I have not been keeping up with the election as much as I should be. I'll care more closer to like November. Yeah, in Vegas, Nick, Nvidia just announced a new uh, chip a couple days ago, and that's been, that's why everybody's going crazy with it. see finally back to 68k i know Shoosh. waiting for 4 a.m to see what will happen <laughs> De definitely and hey devout xrp is doing okay it's currently up around what four percent it's it's actually not doing nearly as good as a bunch of other tokens here which isn't the best thing as um but 
at least it's making some some general upward moves. Um, you know, it'll figure it out itself out a little bit. My 2012 Duramax has the AC seats. My new Benz doesn't. Ooh, AC seats was a good thing back in the day. I miss those things. I'm sure some cars have them, uh, but I just yeah, I haven't seen them in a while here. All right. Um, but anyway, guys, I'm going to end the stream right here. I'm going to have another stream later on tonight. It'll be a little bit later on tonight for sure. Um, watch out for Bitcoin. We are going to be consolidating and doing some whiplashing here over the next few hours. Um, but maybe I'll go live another five, six hours, something like that, closer to the, like later evening. And then from there, we can have another two-hour stream. I'm going to try to really get into the, the, the habit of doing these two-hour streams for multiple times with the day. Because this will allow me to do two or three of these every single day. Except for maybe Sundays or Saturdays where I try to take one day a, a week for a break. And I think that'll be very, very, very good for me and very, very good for you guys. So we don't have to watch the same chart kind of go sideways for a while. And next time we talk, there'll be something big happening. Again, wait for consolidation. I'm not going long on anything right now. I'm still dollar cost averaging and that's what I'm doing. I'm not, I'm not being, you know, I'm not hiding what my intentions are. Literally just sitting on my hands and dollar cost averaging right now. Or day trading if I've seen opportunity. But again, nothing right now has been pure day trading opportunities for me it's mostly just been that a uh, drum pal said hey fuck inflation i care about the economy inflation go up to 20 percent for all i care 